I remember being in the prom dressing rooms, writing that with Anthony Norman, and being so proud and sort of, oh my God, Alan, what is, what is, what, what is this? What's what, huh? What? What's going on? What's happening? You and your fancy toys. Oh, and we're both in new rooms. We have new backgrounds, and you have an on-air thing. That's right. I got a fancy digital hat that follows me around, too. <laughs> How was your day, babe? Are you good? Oh, man, I'm so good. I'm so glad this is happening right now because I've had a stressful day, and this is always such the highlight of my week to good. see your, Me too. your shiny I, face. Well, I woke up, you know, it's been very gloomy here in New York, and then we had one day of sunshine. It was so freezing as fuck, but um, today I woke up, and it was gloomy as fuck again, and I had like a, I had one of those moments, you know, where I was like, no! But um, it's all good now. And um, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We have a great show tonight. I'm so fucking excited. Um, I love Dear Evan Hansen. And more importantly, I love these people. These are four artists that I'm just, and I mean like artists that I'm obsessed with. Um, but before that, thank you so much for uh, for those of you who have joined on to our Patreon. Um, it means the world. It helps keep us going and um, meaning keep us going like we are so excited to do a season two when all this shit is over. And uh, you can join us if you want to. No pressure. No matter what, we are always going to make content. And all that content is always going to be free. But you can join us at patreon.com starting at the beginning of May, we are going to be doing a dance party with our $5 Swallowing Brigade. And um, then the $10 Swallow Army and Up is going to be getting some Q&As and a lot of fun Zoom time experience with me and Alan. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and in the meantime, this let's... Is my, this is my Dear Evan Hansen background. Oh, that's really good. That's his yeah. T-shirt. That's a that's like the Into the Woods giant Evan Hansen. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, and next week, next Wednesday, we are doing a Mary Poppins reunion with Gavin Lee and Ashley Brown and Ensemble Stars Tony Mansker and Vasti Monpoint. Maybe more. So stay tuned. In the meantime, Alan, I love you. I'm giving you a hug. Brooklyn's never been so far away. And let's bring in my superstars, Jessica Phillips, Michael Park, Christiane Knoll, and Andrew Barth Feldman. Yay! Hi. Yay! How are all y'all? Really good. We're oh, great. Now I'm I'm friends with y'all at very, very Hi! different <laughs> levels, but I'm obsessed with you all. Now, Jessica, you're on a bit of a delay because you're up in the mountains. Three, two. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I may have to just leave and come back. No, no, no. I'm obsessed with you. My friends at home, um, I've been obsessed with Jessica for a long time. First of all, we were like, I was a swing at hair while Jessica was covering um, at Next to Normal. And there was, Stephen DeAngelis was doing an understudy show. And like, I sang a song from hair or whatever. And then at the end of the fucking night, like Jessica was doing something fabulous. And then at the end of the fucking night, she just shows up probably in a black car, comes into this understudy fucking concert on the Upper West Side. And she and all the fucking understudies do the opening number of Next to Normal. Whoop, whoop. The opening number. Wow. I was like, fuck you. I just sang this song. <laughs> And you gave a yeah. Tony winning performance just now. <laughs> and um, I mean, she's just a star from, you know. Oh, also, fun fact. Your first gig out of college was, it's a lead, Mrs. Walker. It's a lead in the national tour of Tommy. Uh, that's right. That's right. Yes. I'm a super fan. That's you right. You do know this. Yep. 
And you yeah. married my friend Tad. So I'm just a little bit obsessed. Where? And my dude! Wait, where on earth did you did you see that production? I didn't see it. I've just been obsessed with you ever since, like, when you came, when you swooped into oh. a fucking understudy concert and said, let's do the opening number of oh. Next to Normal. <laughs> like, why not? I was like, I'll sing my conviction. And you were like, hmm, I'll do an opening number. <laughs> Perfectly. Um, and that's when I became obsessed with you. I'm and, sure it wasn't my idea. <laughs> no. Uh, well, no, you're, you're a genius. And uh, seven years on Law and Order. Do you know how hard I've tried to get them to look at me as a as a pizza man just to be like, yes, yeah, you ordered pizza. Dunk, dunk. Yeah. Oh, you're muted. Michael Park. It's you're bound muted. to happen because I think that's the rule. I think at one point, everybody's got at least uh, a walk on role. So I've tried. I've been yeah, like, I'm a special victim. It's not that nice. It's not that, it's not that easy to get a walk on role. You're wrong. Congratulations. <laughs> I like, why can't somebody kill a character actor like this needy, needy character man with cats who, you know, really likes pizza more than people was murdered. I, I think you'd make a great serial killer, Josh. Yeah. I do too. I'm I sure the writer's room is always looking for ideas. Yeah. yeah. Now's the time to write your own content. Thank you. I'm gonna. That's I'm exactly gonna, right. You know, I built this microphone this morning out of cat fur. <laughs> Tears and expired pudding. <laughs> oh no! Expired pudding. <laughs> it's great. And uh, Michael Parks, mm. I the moment I met you, it was the opening night of Falsettos. Um, the the revival, not the not the yeah, original. I was gonna say. Oh yeah, no, it was a revival. We were the open the the original. We were in line for the men's room. Looking for eight balls. No. Um, <laughs> and it was you and your incredible wife, Lori, and yeah. my date was Carol Lee. Yeah. And you and I just hit it off and made the dirtiest jokes all night. And that's when I knew that we were meant to be together forever. Well, you love to make jokes and I love to laugh. I thought it was a perfect union. Okay. Yeah, that's so right. Put all the dirty jokes on me. Yeah, and no. no <laughs> you really are a very, very funny human being. So um, you make it, but you also make it very easy for people to like you, Josh. That's probably why, you know, you Thanks. swallowed a lot of Broadway. It's <laughs> true. I'm a witch. Probably. Did you <laughs> see him in the prom? He was amazing. Oh, no, because I was good. doing I was doing a little show called Dear Evan Hansen at the time. <laughs> did I, does that mean I saw it before? I, oh, I, where I was in the that. <laughs> and but, Andrew, you know, we, there's so many things that I've done. I mean, I, Christiane and I, we, we, you know, you brought up um, Ashley Brown. Christiane and I, we did the, the, the music, music live. live, the first, music live the very first Brown. live thing. Yes, and when the very I first live one. Her. Jessica, I, I, I crashed their um, opening night of. Of what was it? Leap of Faith? Oh, it would have been so good. I crashed all the night. Leap, Leap of Faith. Just the part. Yes. That was with Lisa Goldberg. So. You're, you're, you're muted. Yeah, you're I think you're muted again. And yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think your your AirPods are not doing you good right now. My AirPods suck. Yeah. No, 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 no. My AirPods suck. So, um, okay, uh, so opening say, night. Say? Opening night of Leap of Faith. You snuck in. I'm so jealous. Yes, yeah, so I snuck in with Lisa Goldberg, and and that's where we met. And then we did this really great. We did this really great reading together, Jessica. You and Tad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a. There's a lot. That was great. It was great. <laughs> so now, I heard him. <laughs> We're in an um, alternate Wi-Fi universe. I sort of wish that this is what it was like backstage as well. Like, hey, girl, how was your day? <laughs> <laughs> good. It was good. <laughs> Jessica, I'm very fun. It's very fun. I promise. Um, and Andrew, dude. Hi. 
You are like my favorite person on earth. You know oh, that? That's so nice. You're mine. Stop I it. You, you really? were so good in Emoji really? Land. Are you kidding? It was, oh, you were the best part of the show. I loved that show. But you Thanks, were the best part of it. Friend. You know what's funny is like, obviously you're incredibly talented, but my favorite thing, and like even Michael and I had this talk, everybody's like, you know what? He's so nice. <laughs> and... But then I thought about that today and I was like, it's as if talented people are expected to be whore, like monsters. You know, it's like, oh, there's this person who's so talented. Are they a monster? <laughs> no, you just wonder where they're burying the bodies, Josh. You're waiting for the other shoe to drop all the time. <laughs> it's like, you really want to know what happened to Connor? I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you. He ate his heart out with his fingers. <laughs> He's really a dibbick. He's an old Jewish version of the boogeyman. Wow. Yeah, I know. I just, yeah, it's possible. And um, Chrissy Ann, my love. Hi, Joshy. Um, like, you go, like, you're, you're like my big sister. You know this, yes? I uh, well, yeah, we did that that uh, little shop of horrors. I remember you because um, we were there. I think on our sa the same day for auditions, and you came down the hall and just like what Michael was saying, how you get people to like you, and you. But it was so funny because you were going hi and this wonderful like because you have so many different voices that you use when you're trying to do different things, and so you had this little voice and you were so sweet and you were so loving and gracious to everybody in the hall and sort of went and said hi to everybody. And I thought, wow, is he for real? And then I, know, I thought, right? and then, and, and he is, and you are, and you are that, that generous and sweet and wonderful. And everybody just love adores you. And it makes it so easy. You are so kind because no, I mean, I'm granted, no, <laughs> well, I had no, you know, belief in myself at the time, but because they paired us to read together yeah, and we got I it. shit myself. And I was like, this woman hates me. Who am I to be reading with Christiane fucking Noel? I was like, she hates me. I'm, I'm going to kill this woman's career right here. Cause it's all relying on this production of little. Yes, of is. I thought you actually shit yourself. I thought you were, there was going to be a story. Where I almost pooped. did. I almost did. But at the time I wasn't eating much. It was the year of the twink. You, um, oh we, I, every, when we got out to San Jose and he, we were doing the show and God, Lord, you sounded amazing. He was articulating all these extra high notes on everything. There's a video out there where we're sitting out in the house and he does his, I don't know. Ah, da, da, and he just keeps going up. And it keeps going. And we're like, oh, what the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh my god and no, well amazing. i and would like to say that christiane is the only audrey ever and her somewhere that's green um alan was amazing and somebody posted a full production on the internet because that's where we are nowadays and just watch this majestic Oh magic that is the sorceress that is Christiane <laughs> oh Alan, please, if you will. Oh no! Yeah. Far from Skid Row, I dream we'll go somewhere that's green. Oh. It's I, genius. I can't tell you how many deep dives of Christiane Noel videos I've I've gone down. Truly, she's, I've never seen that though. <laughs> all well, all four of you were national treasures. She was also my first kiss. Alan hit it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs>
my favorite though is that head pop back. That like to the mute that pop. <laughs> uh, I mean, chills. How That's old were you, Josh, in that production? I I was just let go from Wicked. So I was like 27. When you mean let go, you were fired. I was not renewed. But okay. at the time, you know, that's the way, that's the way with Wicked. Like, it felt like, like I was responsible for something, you know. You were given a chance to rest. <laughs> that's it. Yes. Um, <laughs> I was given a chance to get a therapist. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's fine. No, I'm not the problem. Um, yeah, but no, you're sweet. I just love you and everything about you. And you were just so fucking kind to me during that time. Well, I remember you. I mean, the thing that I just adore about you is that um, you're a real fan of of Broadway and of this whole crazy business. Like you you came up, you were a stage door kid. You would you you did all of that. So when you finally were on stage, the time that you would take with all the people at this, you know, afterward and, and waiting in the lobby and people wanting to talk to you and ask you questions. And I remember there was one performance, we had two shows and I felt like I went out, got something to eat, came back. You were still talking to them like, okay, no, you have to, he has to go now. He has to leave now. <laughs> but you, because you wanted to give of yourself so much because you remembered not that long ago before what it was like to be those kids waiting there and asking questions and being supportive. And I, I, I just was marveled at that, that joy and that energy that you want to just e express to all of them and, and just Thanks. make sure everybody felt that way. I, yeah. oh, How quickly that all goes away. <sighs> um, <laughs> but speaking of, because you all are in a show that, or were a part of the show that had that, like I would walk by your stage door and I would go, how on earth are you going to get home and get <laughs> sleep and connect with any, you know, how do you, because it really, it, it did something that other shows didn't. It put mental health, like it blazed mental health into the picture where a lot of kids I think were afraid to discuss that before. And so all of a sudden you had all these kids, this army of children saying, I identify with this or like, I wish you were my parents. Yeah. It's or really like, though, isn't it Josh? Because I mean, next to normal was what 10 years before it. And yeah. Maybe it wasn't because it, it was, it was, it was kind of uh, focused on the mental health of a mother as opposed to a, a a teenager, you know, I mean, it definitely dealt or tackled, attempted to tackle the same amount of this, this the same issue. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I can only, I can only say that it was because it was focused on this, the social anxiety of a, of a teen. And um, yeah. Yeah. And that's yes. that's ever been explored on stage. I mean, but next to normal paved the way with that as well, obviously, but I yeah. mean, different issue, but I mean, it's, it, was, it was both Michael, you know, it was both, they're both Michael Greif. You could draw a straight line from his experience on Max and Normal to his experience in Dear Evan Hansen. No, just a lighthearted romp. Yeah. he <laughs> Lighthearted Michael Greif romp. <laughs> um, well, it's interesting because, you know, um, with uh, Next to Normal, I have a lot of family members that struggle with bipolar. So it was interesting having that experience and, um, relating so much as a family member and that when you're in those situations where it's like, is this real fucking life? You know, um, Jessica, how is your reception? Are you hearing? Okay. Up there. Can you like, what was your experience for next to normal versus this? You're muted. You're, 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 you're muted. <laughs> Just you're muted. I love quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> there you are. Oh, Brooklyn, that's the most beautiful note ever. Thank you, Brooklyn. Nicely. Nicely. 
Um, there you are, Jess. We can hear you now. <laughs> ah, technology. <laughs> Wait. Uh, never mind. I. You're. Never mind. Jess, <laughs> what was your experience like? With next to normal and going into Dear Evan Hansen tackling two different sort of mental health um, shows, really. I'm going to type that in the group chat just so you can see it too. <laughs> you got this. You got this, Jess. There we in go. the group chat, Jess, I believe in uh -huh. you, Jess. So we're typing. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> okay, so you're, all right, awesome. So, um, yeah, you're asking me to, like, to hold up the two experiences with Next to Normal and Dear Evan Hansen. Um, I realize I'm on a 10-second delay. I'm going to talk with my hands a lot so I can make it interesting, <laughs> see if we can catch up. Um, yes, regarding mental health. Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, obviously, the creative team was mostly intact between these two shows because uh, M Michael was at the helm. Um, and, uh, you know, both shows obviously deal with incredibly dark and important themes. Um, Michael just has a, a way of, uh, of leading um, the charge in terms of telling this story in a, in a, in a potent way, in a meaningful way without, um, without making a co comment on it, you know, just really allowing the material to stand and be stark and, um, and, and let, uh, you know, let these characters tell the story um, without a lot of anything extra. And he is so remarkable at, at, uh, at leading strong performances, especially uh, strong female performances. And mm. so I, I think, I think he, uh, I mean, obviously you saw his work in Grey Gardens as well. I mean, I just, he just, uh, he knows he's drawn to, um, material uh, that have strong leading women um, and Michael Park. So, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, he, he just knows how to, how to pick the shows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I um, can't tell if anyone likes my joke with a 10 second delay. I do. I do. I do. I do. Um, no, I we're gonna, we're no, gonna I, type. We should type for Jess because she seems to get the the, the typing really fast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, uh, right? what I would love to hear because, like, I saw yeah. this and I watched yeah. what all of you go through every night, and I was like, and at the time, I remember being like, I am sick of doing comedy. I'm sick of trying to get the same laugh every night yeah. because sometimes people suck. No, you're not. No, you're and not. then I would watch what you guys do and be like, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, no. Like, oh my God. Look at like what, like, what the fuck? You're not tired of comedy. Don't be I was like, tired of no, comedy. thanks. Really I'm going to make the you. same joke every day. How do you, how do you go through it? Like, how, like, what do you do? I'm going to start with you, Christiane, go to Andrew, Michael. And then Jess, and I'm going to type that to Jess. So. Yes. <laughs> um, it it it. I have to be honest. By the time we we took the the, the show it took its pause, I was I was grateful for the pause. Mm -hmm. I was I was going scene to scene to scene to scene. I was really tired. Um, I I didn't realize how tired I was until after the first few days of us not having to 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 do that night after night after night, um, that how, how exhausted I was. And then I sort of emerged like, Oh, wow. I almost feel like myself again, <laughs> but, um, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's really well written and it's not difficult to sort of slide into that and, and, uh, and go into that dark, find those dark places. But by the end of it, I was finding, okay. Cause I talked to Michael when we were in rehearsals for the tour, we had that little um, 
that little <laughs> cocktail party on the roof. Mm -hmm. And he, he was like, you know, everyone's going to get depressed. You, you're going to go up and down. You're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have, it's going to, and you're, you're going to find muscle memory. And there's going to be a time where you're just going to have to like goof around at some point. And I, for the longest time I couldn't find, I, I was like, there's no way I can goof around. And, and I found I couldn't do it on the deck, but I found myself going back to my dressing room and, and watching, um, Schitt's Creek or like, just like if I could catch like four minutes of it between scenes, I mean, it was that like unplug, plug back in, unplug, which I thought I never thought I would ever do something like that. Cause I want to try to keep a continuity, but I, but what he said was right. You like, you, you, you get the continuity, your body is in it and you have to take a breath. You actually have to sort of gulp some air and some positivity before you you know dive back into it again. So I'm grateful for that advice because I certainly you know you utilized it, especially yeah. like having a kid. Mm. And we can get that with you and you know oh. Michael and Jess because that must. You do. I also I have a kid. Yeah, yeah. Andrew. I was going to say your your baby. He is, a is cat. Well, she's not a baby anymore. So <laughs> she's not a baby anymore, is she, Andrew? <laughs> Um, listen, my man, not kiddo, my man, um, because you also have a unique fucking story in the sense that, and like, you literally are one of my favorite people, but here you are, you, um, P.S., your gateway drug was also mine, which was, well, not totally, but Broadway wise was beauty and the beast. Like really, <laughs> I spent my, the first ounce of my bar mitzvah money on an orchestra seat to see the original cast of beauty and the beast. And I know that that was where your journey began Yeah, and your, <laughs> your bar mitzvah, you started a theater company called Zniefrock. Yes. Which just sounds like a funny German bar. Doesn't it? Uh, but to raise money for autism research. Yeah. Which is incredible. I don't think I knew what autism was when I was 13. I have a, my, my brother, he's really my cousin, but we were raised together. My brother's on the spectrum. Uh, so. Oh my God. That's amazing. My brother was just a dickhead. <laughs> uh, they don't do research for that. But anyway, um, you you know become you win the jimmy awards where like when i was in fucking high school we had the homer awards which exactly wow. it was just for poway high i won wow. for tevia and i won for sylvia in ruthless thank you wow yeah i know thanks anyway um but and then you're what you booked it at 16 yeah so that's like a major life change, huh? <clears throat> nah, it's mostly the same stuff. It was good. Um, oh no, yes, it was. It was. Um, it was all very scary and a lot. And uh, yeah, I, I was just thankful to have people like these people to keep me sane and sure keeping it fresh and such. You know, like like I mean, Park, you remember at the beginning, I was going crazy. Like I would, I was, I would. I would, I was like, like toward the beginning, like you're talking about how do you get out of it? How do you handle it? I was really at the beginning, like really, I thought the way that I had to do this was to go like method, like, like to get as into his head as possible, which is not healthy, not the way to do it on Broadway. Just not, wasn't the right idea. I needed to have more control. So finding that and for, and letting myself do what Park and everyone had said from the very beginning, which was like, we goof around backstage. Like you have to, we have to have a, a, as, as light and an environment as possible in order to do this and, and go home and stay sane. Um, once I started allowing myself to do that and, and forgiving myself for not, you know, doing every single thing I could in my head to, to give the best performance possible. I gave a better performance once yeah. I to do that. Um, what was it like handling the stage door and then all of a sudden, like, every teenager in America being like, I want you to be my boyfriend, and you being like, oh, I want to play a game? <laughs> um, it was, it's fine. It's, um, it's, it's interesting. Something that somebody said recently that was like, it's, it's, it's interesting when they think they, they know you. 
Mm-hmm. From from and 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 part of that is because I I do my best to be as authentic as possible on social media and stuff and and I do present a lot of myself and it was a completely vulnerable experience so of course they think they know me but you know like I they don't and so it was kind of this this really weird thing that I had to get used to because I was in their shoes months earlier, weeks earlier. So it, it was kind of adjusting to that and, and understanding the kind of presence I had to have. But the stage door was, I, it was tough because I stayed on Long Island the whole, for my whole run. So I would take the car home. There was one driver who drew, who's driven all the Evans. His name's Jose. He's amazing. And, uh, it would be an hour to two hour drive sometimes. Hmm. And, uh, so, and then I'd have tutoring the next day. So I really couldn't stay at the stage door too long. I couldn't do pictures. And of course, they don't always like that. The fans, they don't always like it when I don't go out or when I don't do pictures because that's always part of it. So so it was forgiving myself for for not going out to the stage door was tough sometimes because I would always wait at the stage door and be so disappointed when like yeah. Ethan Slater or Jonathan Freeman didn't come out, you know? So it was, or Josh Lehman, you know? Or, or Chrissy Ann or Michael or Jess. Anyway, yeah, no, I get that. I get that. Park I did true. come out when I when I went to see the show though. I think <laughs> it did come out when I went to see Dear Evan Hansen. I, I I have a picture of me and Colton because I saw Colton as Connor, which is exciting. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. I was very lucky. The stage doors at that time were insane, though. I, mean, I can't first imagine first the beginning of this. Yeah, I so can't imagine. First six months were insane. Cool. Yeah. Now, Michael, for you, you um you have two beautiful kids. You are three, forgive me. Sorry, quarantine, babe. Yeah. Babe, babe, I haven't been over in a long time, babe. And the third one refuses to accept me as a dad. <laughs> Only a friend. And anyway, babe, um, you're an incredible father. You're an incredible man. And you have the task of having, you know, what your character goes through and not like anybody watching this doesn't know, but just in case I don't want to be the dickhead that spoils anything. Cause I like to go into shows knowing nothing. And yeah. it was, you yeah. know, very, a very shocking journey that I went on. I mean, um, it's been on way, I mean the show has been on Broadway for like four years now. So if you're not going to spoil anything for anybody. Okay. Well, the character of his son hooks up with a hooker. There you and go. then becomes the president and goes on a cross country <laughs> spree, putting Molly on his bottom. Um, anyway, uh, so like, what was it like? Like, how did you get through doing all this stuff? You know, I, I it started in the beginning, and there were so many changes, and we were it was I didn't we really didn't have a chance to kind of get into uh, how it was affecting us because of all the changes that were being made and because of songs that were being cut and worried right. about songs that were being cut. And so it was much more technical at the beginning of this whole thing. And it wasn't until we got to, um, yeah, cause we're trying to still trying to figure out these characters and, and, and the journeys that they were going on. And I don't want to sound actory or the trajectory that they were going on. And so when we got to, I can honestly say, and I was lucky enough Sorry to jump all over the place. I was kind of lucky enough to to have um, Talk Everlasting um, that was going on at the same time, right? And so I was juggling those two shows, knock on wood, and how lucky and fortunate I was uh, at the time. So I didn't really have to, to, to worry about my own mental health or the mental health of the people around me on stage uh, because we I wasn't into it yet. But when we finally did start sitting on Broadway and we realized how important this was and, and, and what it was doing and who's in the audience. I mean, I, I don't want to know ever who's in the audience. It, I don't need to know. Don't tell me. If you do, I'll, I'll probably slap you. I don't want to know. It changes. It changes the, 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 the feeling, the energy, I feel. Anyway. Yeah. Um, did you find that to be true to Andrew or no, you don't care. Yeah, No, I, I do. And I didn't realize it at first because there were a lot of people coming at the beginning. So, so, and I remember I told you once and you were not happy with me because I didn't. Was it? No, no, no. It's just like, I don't like to have, and I know no. that there were so many of us, you know what I mean? Is that there's so many of us who didn't want to know. And, and I don't, I didn't want the audience to have a face. I liked having yes. just a sea of, yeah silhouettes out there you know every, every single time i knew even when like my family was there and they'd come like every other night i i would be like well, okay 
I mean, come on, your mother was there every night. Every man. night. Every, every night for the night. first month. Every single night for the first month of my run. My I knew exactly where she was sitting too. Yeah. Uh, in, the box. In, the, in the box. Yeah. And that was that was where my family would, would sit. So I, I learned not to look at the box. Oh, <laughs> uh, just uh, 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 uh. anyway. So I mean, and thankfully I had, you know, I had Jennifer, I had Jennifer Laura Thompson to cackle with. And and I and I learned <clears throat> to tell you the honest truth because of falsettos and because of what uh joshua wearing plaid pants at that party i remember and i went what is happening here you just, <laughs> you're glorious um that's 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 why we became friends because of those pants anyway um it was it was christian borrell i remember call, calling him and saying dude how how are you faring going through that every single night man because I, I don't know if I'm doing okay with this. And he said, we need just laugh our asses off backstage. And so I made it, a, you know, basically <clears throat> Jennifer and whoever, Mike Feist, Will made it very easy to be, you know, to, to laugh backstage. But so we would just do anything we could to slide out what, you know, Christiane said. She was like, it was not easy to slide back into the performance, but you all the work was already done, right? And so you had to do self-preservation afterwards and you just, you just had to, you had to laugh, had to laugh. Well, Park, you, what sort of changed the culture in the theater is when you got virtual reality in your dressing room. I, you know, maybe. <laughs> it certainly <laughs> made your Instagram posts interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love playing game. Listen, we, I spent more time in that theater than I did, you know, with my kids because uh, my kids had school all day, so I didn't see them at all. Mm -hmm. So I spent more time with you guys or with the the, the, the cast than I did with my family. Um, and so I wanted to make it more like, okay, how is how am I going to make this easy? Because there's only eight of us, nine of us, ten of us at the time in the beginning. So how are we going to make this super easy for people to like chill out? Uh, and so we played a lot of games, a lot of video games. You played wow. board games too, didn't you? Board games, Tan, uh, Pandemic, Josh, um, not Josh, uh, uh, Andrew introduced us to Maleficent. What is it? Wait, wait, are you thinking of, are you thinking of a Villainous? Which we Villain, played? Villain, uh, Villainous. Yeah, it was fun. Villainous and, and something about Hitler. What? Secret Hitler, that's right. Yeah. Secret Hitler? What? Oh, that's right up your alley. That Andrew, was... after this, you are going to bed. You are going to bed. <laughs> you are going to bed. You are, trying to, you are trying to kill Hitler, is what I explain to people when I when I explain the game. Unless you are Hitler, in which case you're not trying to kill Hitler, you might be Hitler in the game. But um, it's a great game. It's so good, and we we played that. We played. <laughs> is this a game? Is this a game, or is it like murder? Where you? It's, it's, like, game, it's kind of like mafia. mafia. It's kind of like mafia. Um, and then we played that. We played Quelf one time. Do you remember that, Michael Park? I, 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 if it didn't stick with me, it probably wasn't that great of a game. <laughs> that well, we, was, only, we only played yeah. it one time. You know what I mean? I mean, we if we only played it one time, it's not fair for me to say we, we were playing. We played play twice at no. at at prom. We used to play generous genocide <laughs> and um, other fun games like Mushy Mussolini. <laughs> no, but I must say, pandemic is probably. I'm sorry for this. For oh, talking about it, but pandemic is actually a fantastic game. Do you know why? Why? Because, you play, because the four of you or five of you play as a team. You're not playing against each other. You play to fight the pandemic. I love that game. It's a great game, and it makes everybody. You know, we all work together. No one's a leader. Uh, we all have our say. We all have our jobs to do because because that's what your character is. It's like a scientist or it's a doctor or, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. And each one has. Yeah. It's so good. I, it, like anyone could just jump in the game who's never played it before and be like, hey, Absolutely. Bro, you do this and you do that. And you're like, oh, my God, that's such a good idea. Like yeah. everyone has their own. It's so fun. Now, Jess. Jess, can you hear me? I can hear you. Great. How did yeah. you get through all the serious shit? Just in kidding. The show eight oh. times a week. Or WEC, okay. as I just typed in the private chat. <laughs> eight times a WEC. Um, How did I you wish, get through that? Uh, right. Yeah. I. 
Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that Christiane said something uh, very similar to this. It's just, you know, trying to work within a range that didn't um, make us want to take a hostage. You know, <laughs> I think um, I, I quickly learned that I had to um, give myself permission to work within a range. Yeah. Wow. I think you just laughed at my joke like 10 yeah. seconds ago. <laughs> um, but, uh, and as, as soon as, as soon as I gave myself that permission to have a different show every night and know that I did not play Secret Hitler with Andrew, <laughs> no. Um, but uh, as soon as I, uh, as soon as I allowed myself to, you know, to, to be okay with the fact that there were going to be some shows where I just felt to, you know, too bound up to be really vulnerable and that that was okay. And then there were some shows that I was feeling so fragile that I, you know, fell over the edge in a way that also was not good for the character or the material. And, you know, and I just, I just found sort of where my outside boundaries were and uh, you know, allowed myself the the room inside that sort of scaffolding, and that once I figured that out, then everything became a little bit easier. Because you know, Christiane and I, obviously, we did it on the road for a year, and then came back and resumed it in New York. So it was it was it was a lot of shows. It was not as many shows as Michael Park, but it was a lot of shows. <laughs> Jess, you did come to the murder mystery party, though. That was something you did you did do. Would fans also see me as a mom? I have no audio now. Oh, wait, wait I'm gonna check. I'm, I'm, I'm typing it. Murder mystery party. Oh. Yeah, I came to the murder <laughs> mystery party. I brought my kids, I brought my husband. <laughs> that was really fun. Yeah, would fans see me as a mom? Yes, yes. <laughs> I am not in Russia. I'm in upstate New York, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Just, we're typing in the private chat for everyone. What if um, all this time <laughs> Jessica <laughs> was yeah. really in Russia? I, mean, that, I think that's it's a testament to the material. Yeah. Oh God. One oh, thing God. I, will I have say, no idea. One what's thing I will say. Though, <laughs> man. Should I just get up and dance? Yes. <laughs> Anybody have a map? Anybody have a map? 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 Oh map, yeah, map. they did that thing. They, 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 that that fantastic tenor did that. Oh uh, my god, is that amazing? I love it. Yeah, it really was amazing. But uh, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that, and I hear you know Alex Lackmore kind of chimed in too, which was wonderful. What a testament to to that um, that that fantastic actor. But uh, I was like, that's not where Larry's headspace was, man. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm like, that's great. I would have loved to have done that, but no way, Larry. Larry was. Yeah, but I loved his his that. Uh, I, right, yeah, yeah man. Everybody's Mark, like doing Mark, their little thing. Mark, you got to give that guy a call and be like, hey, uh, come to us. got a couple things. Yeah, I got a couple notes for it. No, absolutely not. Fantastic. Michael, can I ask you a question? Sure, please. I want to know what it was like to melt in Stranger Things. Oh. <laughs> we find. <gasps> We finally we were, watched it. I gotta we say, it. we caught up, and it was so we're like, "Oh, he's gonna explode like the rat!" Oh, it was very. Can Je did Jessica didn't hear that question, but so she's not gonna hear one. I just time. typed it. Um, Spoiler. Uh, what was really cool? <laughs> what, was really, what was really amazing about that? It was so incredibly painful because they had me falling. What my character gets yeah. stabbed in the throat with a pair of scissors. Is that where you got that scar? <laughs> no, <laughs> five years old, brick wall. No, oh. um, oh. but uh, but uh, no, I get stabbed in the throat with the scissors, which is really cool, all CGI'd. And then I had to, the most painful of the entire uh, three months I was shooting that show was having to fall on this very thin uh, foam pad that they CGI'd to make look like the floor. It was amazing, but I was just like having to fall over and over again from my knees right onto my face with no oh. hand. Boom. 
that's what it was like. I would say ah. that was the most that was the most exciting day, though, because you oh, get to do amazing. stuff. What's wonderful about that show is that you got to do stuff that you just in real life, hopefully, you that you know never happens to you. But I remember Annabelle, my my um, now sixteen year old. I think she was thirteen then. Same age as all the other kids on the show. Um, and so she came down with me, and that was a lot of fun. Michael, every time I fucking turn on the TV, you're on it. It's <laughs> remarkable. I know, don't make it any money though, Josh. That's no. impossible, <laughs> really. Like I, even I, know, I, you. I just I just watched <laughs> you. I just watched you. I saw you and you, and I was like, "Whoa, he's in old timey clothes." This is all. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you were shot originally for net for a, a lifetime. And it was just shot down the road. It was shot in Nyack, New York. So it was like five minutes from my house. Oh, that's now, cool. Michael, uh, how many Emmys do you have? Three? <laughs> four? Three? Three. three? Emmys, Those are that. big motherfuckers, no, they're too. Day Emmys. J just, are just, they smaller? Know, they're day 10. No, they're the same. <laughs> they're big. They're the size of small people. Yeah. Of small children. <laughs> you know, the wings are situated in a fashion where you can put a flute of champagne in there yeah. and with it. It's kind of cool. Do you think yeah. it was designed for that purpose? What's, I don't know. <laughs> you know, a friend of mine is a Philadelphia actor and uh, one of the best actors I know, but he has like 15 Barrymore awards. Oh really? Yeah. And I was like, so what do you do with them? And he was like, well, uh, some right. of them are door stops. Some <laughs> of them are, you know, Listen. they hold up books like, uh, you know, I've, what do I do now? Yeah, three Emmys and two seventy. He's like, I've got children. <laughs> like, you know, this is wonderful. Thank you. I have 15. <laughs> like, yeah. This I is did my a life. show with F. Murray Abraham once, and he brought his Oscar in and put it backstage, and it was just there the whole run of the show, so that if anyone wanted to come up and like hold it, they could. <laughs> my <laughs> favorite like, story. I'm just like feeling it's very ergonomically correct. You just yeah. like your hand just fits it. Yeah, my but if favorite... you notice, on the top of it, it's got like three dents. I think he used it as a hammer at one point. <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, this isn't the first time I've talked shit about Wicked on my show. <laughs> but it's, there was a performer that had a Tony award and, you know, they are pretty mean to people or used to be at that show. And so this performer would bring their Tony award to the note sessions at a certain point and what? they would hold the Tony. And then every time they got the note, they would go. About you know, six months actually, into their run, that's that's actually what uh, what I did actually <laughs> with your, with your Jimmy award. award? With your Jimmy award. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just bring the glass. I actually did one time have to bring the, the Jimmy award to work because we were shooting the video that we released when I was leaving the show that they had me do because I did the Brody.com vlog and they had me do like a spiritual successor and it, it involved my Jimmy getting getting stolen, so I had to carry this glass. Diamond Jimmy Award to the Music Box Theater, which was pretty. That was fun. That was really <laughs> clever. You did a, you did so many cool. Um, all those videos leading up to your your demise were pretty amazing. Andrew is a fucking mitzvah. That's oh my all, god, he's a fucking glowing mitzvah. Now, one of my favorite thing is when shit goes wrong. Jessica, I am asking you, what is some crazy shit that went wrong during your tenure. Can you hear me? Can you read the chat? My friend in Russia, comrade, can you read the chat, comrade leader? In our production of Dear Evan Hansen, it is about a comrade that says you will be comrade. <laughs> and they makes everybody feel good about building a farm. And they, because Connor <laughs> says, I don't build farm, and we execute him immediately. And his parents say, why he didn't want to build farm? <laughs> uh, maybe Ev Comrade Evan knows. And just Comrade Evan goes, we will build a farm uh, for yeah. forever. <laughs> um, can you hear me, Jess? Oh. That was some good banter. That was awesome. Yes. Um, we will build a no farm. You know, you know what? I just googled who. who I hear Russian. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so Jess, what was some on stage shit that happened? All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Okay, there we um, go. I mean, you know, uh, there have been some technical things that have happened just in the last few months over at the Music Box, like set pieces that came on at the wrong time or didn't go off at the right time and and, and that kind of thing. But um, I can't think of anything more embarrassing than that. Uh, what did I do? I, I just um, yelled. <laughs> I was, okay, so here's what happened. I was riding on and uh, riding the sofa on at the end of the show for So Big, So Small. And the, and the, the garage door didn't come up. So <gasps> the set piece just kind of ran into the garage door. Yeah, that's on the sofa. Fine. I, I was fine. There was, there were no injuries involved, but yeah, I, uh, I just, I just uh, found that, that I, 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 I was sitting there and I realized what was happening and I just said, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> You know, somebody and, and thought they did, and we had to stop the show for a minute and we got it all fixed. But you know, that's the that's the fun of live theater, right? Somebody thought Greif was genius. Somebody was like, that is brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's genius. That is. Wait, I, I have one. I have one actually. Park, you might remember this it was from your last show. <laughs> it was during For Forever. I um I there's a part where I get up out of the chair and I go up off the disc for there he goes racing toward and I tripped ah! on the edge of the disc as I'm getting off of it. Yeah. And I fell onto my knees and the stage is raked. So I slid down yeah. the stage on my knees. There he goes. Racing there he toward. goes. Oh, and there he goes. Yeah, there he goes. <laughs> I did get right up, but at the party after Stacy Mindich, our producer came up to me and said, I thought you were going into Roby. I was not sure what was going to happen. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. I, I, I'm surprised because you, you're, you know, you never missed, you never miss a, 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 a beat at all. I mean, in fact, you knew everyone else's lines from a very, 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 very uh, early, early on in, in your run, um, which, uh, which was, you know, kind of awesome for, you know, any given night. I wouldn't be able to say, I wouldn't be able to, I forget, I forget my lines in glove song. I'd come up with a new word or something. <laughs> it was so strange. My, I, my favorite friend, thing that would happen on any given night is the different ways you would say, would anybody else like some chicken? The different ways you'd say that every night. I, I would, I, there were times where I'd almost break because you'd be like, what, hey, chicken? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just so, it, it, it it's not anything that you plan on doing. It's just no. something that your brain has you do. And and so you do it. Yeah. Uh, you don't make a big deal out of it. And and you just it's just the way people and it's actors <laughs> react sometimes and talk sometimes. It uh yeah, nothing really crazy. Uh, I'm sure the <laughs> sure the original sure the original sure the original cast has plenty of stories. Uh, Fuck them. We don't like Laura Dreyfus. We don't like Ben. Fuck them. They're lazy, lazy performers. Lot of, you know, the sets the sets not moving. You guys weren't. I mean, in DC, we had really low rent. Uh, um, uh, what is it? Uh, automation. So, yeah. We it was terrible. I mean, I'm the very first night, our opening night, it the the disc didn't go out for the very uh, for the for the breakfast scene. Wow! <laughs> so we had to stop everything, and everything was in a holding pattern for like a half an hour. So we all went down to Ben's dressing room and just drank champagne. <laughs> you know, the reviewers had already, the reviewers had already come. Everything was over. I mean, so the um uh, tell Jess about uh, the, uh, to chime in and just interrupt me when she can about opening night in Los Angeles um where we had to stop the show or start it or stop it five times and they finally gave up um because 
the uh, uh, it just couldn't get it. all of the computers just sort of shut down, and they had to. Crashed. So they took a um, an intermission. But they finally gave up and took intermission before way um, um, you will be found. And they took like a 30 minute intermission, came back and started with him on stage, just and t taking the breath. And we did, um, you will be found. And then he ran off stage. They saw it off the cast. He turned back around and they continued act two. It was the most amazing thing because I mean, the, the automation went down, the projections went down. They had to transfer to all the secondary computers because it was the first big move we had done. They have to saw it off. So I, <laughs> I heard no. all of that. It was a four hour show. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was insane. Mm -hmm. It was insane. It was a four hour show. Yeah. yeah. They have to saw off the cast, Josh. No, no. Well, 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 I did start ripping it off. Every night. Oh, did you? Yeah. No, that's a, was there a like safe not? word? No, it was always very, very, very safe, actually. I also have to say my nose bled a couple times on stage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got nosebleeds. Yeah, yeah. Well, that happens. <laughs> um, yeah, the worst one was when it was uh, in words fail. And I would do, worst of, and I'd be looking down and I would see blood hitting the Oh, floor. God. One time in Wicked, I gave myself a broken nose and I bled all over myself and a girl screamed. How did you give yourself a broken nose? I'm holding a giant book and I go, we go your loathing dump. <laughs> and then I look down at the book and blood starts gushing. Uh -huh. And then at the end of the song, I look at this girl, Sunny, and I go, loathing you. And I look at her and she goes, lo. <laughs> And there's like the stage management team off stage going like, get the fuck off stage. That's expensive. <laughs> yeah, you know? right. Not about you. Don't bleed no. on the book. Don't bleed on the book. No, the book, the costume. Do you know who designed that? <laughs> you know, anyway. Um, listen, I didn't love only, you guys. Wait, what? Didn't only one uh, person win a, a Tony for uh, in Wicked? Um, Idina. Yeah. Yep. So you kind of outed her in your story, right? No, 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 no. no, no, no I think you were saying someone else came into the show. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. To Tony. Yes. He really just tried to ruin Josh's life. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Michael Parks is awful. He's a monster. Um, no, but listen, it's 10 o'clock. I love you guys. Oh, God, it's late. Um... I'm telling Jess in the private chat that I love her. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you all Thank so you much for having us. For coming Thank here. You. Jess, I'm sorry you're in Russia. Um, comrade. <laughs> comrade Evan Hansen. Uh, a comrade I'm Evan so Hansen. sorry. Today <laughs> is a good day, and here's why we today build farm for today Comrade will be Today will be fruitful for Comrade Leader. Does anybody have a well, farm? <laughs> uh, Josh, I have a question for you. Yeah. You're that, so I know when we do that voice that you drop into sometimes, because I listen to all of your podcasts, just yes. so you understand that. This but when one. you drop into that voice, which came first, you doing that or Brooks doing that? Brooks. Just, it was Brooks. So it's Brooks. you, you're, Come you're on. channeling Brooks all the time. Oh, my God. Brooks is, I'm the little brother Brooks never, ever wanted. <laughs> I mean, oh, and Michael, you did Little Me with Brooks. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was the funniest cast I think I've ever been a part of. Martin Short, Michael McGraw. Brooks Ashmanskis in the same cast. I mean, it's insane. My you, Michael Park, noted character actor. <laughs> <laughs> I, was a strip, I did the strip tease. I was, I was, you know, I had nope. that my first night in the prom when I uh, took over for the guy in Atlanta, I was reading the reviews in the opening scene and just like reading terrified and Brooks comes up behind me and goes, you're ruining this. You know that <laughs> <laughs> like that's just Brooks. Yeah. Um, but I love you all so much. I want to give you all a hug. Thank you so much for being with me tonight and all of you at home. Thank you so much for tuning in. Listen, things are crazy. You are nailing it. If you got up today, you are nailing it. Tomorrow, if you need to sit on the couch all day, you're nailing it. If you want to go work out, you're nailing it. 
If you want to do nothing, you're nailing it. If you want to get creative, you're nailing it. You are so loved. You are so special. And you can reach out at any time. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Josh Swallow's live stream. Tune in next week, Wednesday, 9 p.m. for a Mary Poppins reunion with Ashley Brown, Gavin Lee, Tony Mansker, and Vasti Montpoint. Good night. Good night. Good night. Josh Swallows, Josh Swallows, Josh Swallows.